FP Santangelo joins us on Willard and Dibs. Hi, FP. How are you doing? What's going on, boys? How are we doing? Uh, we're, we're doing good. I just uh, I didn't know until last night because I've been in a total fog that uh, when Dibs goes on his little uh, Vegas soiree here in a couple days that you're going to be in here later this week. Let's go, baby. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'm fired up. L L yeah. LFG, man. Yeah, let's go. Let's Wally Pip Dibs ass. I'm ready. Let's yeah. go. Okay, first of all, <laughs> settle that down. I got, I got a baby, FP. You met my wife, for God's Ooh. sakes. How dare you try to pit me? Man, I brought you into this world, and I'll take you out of it. I'm uh, I'm going eastbound on the Bay Bridge right now, and traffic is moving smoothly in case you want an uh, old traffic update there, Danny boy. I appreciate that. Uh, Normally it comes on the 8th, but I'll allow it early. All right, all right. Lower deck. We're, we're moving oh. smoothly. Heading, I'm heading over to Albany High School to watch my buddy uh, Joe Wallace. He coaches at Camp Alindo. I'm going to watch a high school baseball game today. Oh, I, I thought nice, you were the going. Cougars. I thought you were going eastbound on the Bay Bridge because you've had it with the Giants, and you're <laughs> you're you're headed east, and that's it. We're done. No, I headed west a couple of years ago, and I ain't going nowhere. But uh, yeah, it's a weird day today, right? It's just weird. R Rennell's a, a dear friend of mine, and um, she's the voice of the Giants. And while you never know what goes on behind closed doors, and I don't pretend to know, um, it's just I'm sad that I won't be hearing her and she won't be at the ballpark. From a from a selfish standpoint, I you know I saw her every day, and she's a dear friend of mine. I'm going to miss that. I mean, FP, can you? I wonder what you would say about this. I actually think the Giants and and the off season is not over yet, despite what Farhan says. Um, they they they've spent money. They've got some people now on the team who were pretty interested in watching. Um, we'll see where this goes. All in all, a positive offseason. Yet, over the last three weeks, they've found a way to feel like the, the most cold-hearted team in all of baseball in the midst of all of that. And and that's a head-scratcher to me. What What is your reaction to that? Well, I mean, that's a really vague question, Mark. I mean, do you want me to address the J.D. Davis thing? Do you want me to address the the Rennell thing today? What specifically are you talking about? All of it. That's my point. From from Brandon Crawford to J.D. Davis to Rennell to the fact that they've started the offseason by saying people in baseball don't want to come here because San Francisco. Like, they, they have found a way in the midst of bringing in players to uh, to feel like they do not understand human interaction or their fan base, and I find it very very concerning as a fan. Yeah, I, I thought Ann Killian's article today in the Chronicle was was really poignant, and and it just kind of resonated with you know a kid that grew up a Giants fan has been able to work for the organization for a long time, whether it's on the field or off the field, that that forever Giant thing is real. Whether you play a year for the Giants or you played fifteen years for the Giants. They always treat you the same. And, and I, I think that's amazing because a lot of organizations, that isn't the case. That said, my, the J.D. Davis thing to me, like if I'm going player mode, my agent's got to sit me down and say, look, if we go to arbitration and we win and you get this number and they release you, you're not going to get that number. So we should probably just settle for the lower number that's guaranteed. Because anybody that didn't see Matt Chapman on the horizon, let alone my agent, like that's to me, I mean, is it a great look for the Giants? Probably not. But like that falls on the agent for me. He's got to lay out that scenario. And if he lays out that scenario and as a player, I say, let's go for it. Then that's on the player. That's not a smart decision to go to uh, court in arbitration. And if you win the case and you get released, you don't get the money. When all of us kind of had an idea that Matt Chapman was going to be a giant. And where would that leave J.D. Davis? So that. My first gut reaction is that that's on the player and that's on the agent. Like it, it, it is. I, I don't know what your guys' take or what you discussed on it, but like if you sit me down, you guys, and say here's six point three guaranteed, or let's take a chance on six point nine, and there's six hundred thousand dollar difference, I'm gonna take the six point three guaranteed every single day. And if they release me, I got six point three million. Yeah, no doubt. So, yeah, I'm I'm in the that, same. That, uh... that, that whole thing. Publicly, Dibs, did it look good? No, I get it. And then publicly, does the Rennell thing look good? No, and I get it. But I don't know what went on behind closed doors. I don't know what Rennell asked for. I don't know what the numbers were. I don't know if there was contention there previously. 
I don't know how Rennell was. Fe- I don't know any of these things. That's all I do know is I'm going to miss Rennell. And, and that's kind of where I'm at today because I don't know if you guys saw my tweet today. I did my first ever TV show with Rennell, yep. Giants pregame show on a stool outside the dugout. It came my turn to talk. I had no idea what I said. We went to break. I blacked out. And I said, how did I do? And she goes, you were great. And she was like my mentor my whole first year in television. It just kind of like held my hand, guided me through it, had fun, always laughing, always smiling, always giving me huge hugs before and after. Like she's a dear friend. So from a selfish standpoint, I'm really going to miss seeing her at the ballpark this year. And today's a tough day, I think, for a lot of Giants fans. Yeah, many Giants fans. And we all have Rennell stories. And I, I was telling Mark mine during the break about when I made my appearance doing a first pitch back in had to be 2006, and she was on the mic for that, and it's forever etched in my memory, and I think a lot of fans out there have the similar Rennell memories, whether it's from the ballpark or just hearing her on the radio. So, FP, I, I know you're you're close to the team, but as a fan of this ball club, and you hear about all the things and all of the fan angst, what can you tell fans as far as you know reasons to maybe still come out and, and not harbor ill will toward the organization after a, another choppy moment in the offseason. I mean, it's all perspective, right? If you're a Giants fan like I am, I can't wait for baseball. Like I, I, I'm, you know, it's been my life, you guys. When I got to Scottsdale, whatever's going on in my life changes. I'm bouncing around the ballpark. Whenever I'm at the yard, I'm happy. And I, would, I think it's safe enough to say that there's a lot of Giants fans out there that are the same way. It's one of the best ballparks in baseball. We all grew up Giants fans. It's baseball season. Opening day should be a national holiday. You know, these are all things that, that take priority for me and take precedence over, you know, the, the lens I want to look at things through. Like, are there things where you're just like, oof? Yeah, of course. But I think every team, if you're on a sports talk radio in every market, has things where they're just like, oh, can't believe we did that in the off season. Can't believe we did that. I don't know about this year. But that's the beauty of baseball. We don't know what to expect. And definitely we don't know what to expect from this ball club. I have no idea. I'd like to come on here and give you the homer take and say, hey, wild card, baby, mark it down. I don't know. I don't know what this team's going to be at this point. I think it's just a wait and see. And I always say it's like like pizza. I like it any way it comes. <laughs> and that's baseball for me. Hmm. And, and whether it's frozen pizza at 2 in the morning or the best pizza in San Francisco, I like baseball and I like pizza. And I can't wait for this whole thing to start this year. I'm excited. F.P. Santangelo with us here on Willard and Dibs. FP, you do, do you buy the Blake Snell thing? Do, do do you think there's a decent chance this still happens? The fact that Blake Snell is throwing for scouts right now for them to see what kind of shape he's in in order to sign him or not is the biggest joke in the world. That's like, I don't know. That's like I, I saw a, a Buster only tweet, so I'm copying this. He says like Tom Cruise auditioning at a local playhouse. Like this guy's a Cy Young Award winner. Whoop. Did we lose him? And gone. Yeah, probably just right. uh, went through the He's tunnel. He's just on the bridge. Yeah. 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 Get him back. We'll get him back in here. We'll get him back. Real quick, yeah. Yeah. It's um, interesting, though, about uh, Blake Snell. Oh, he's good. It, FP, sorry, we lost you, buddy. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I was, in the mi- I was in the middle of a good one. I don't know where I left off, but the fact that Blake Snell has to throw bullpens in order to be, like, for a team to see him, to sign him, when he's a reigning Cy Young Award winner, it's like Tom Cruise auditioned at a local playhouse for a part. Like, I, I don't – and that's a that's from Buster Only's tweet. I stole that from Buster Only, full, uh, full credits. To Buster, but like, what are we doing? What, what are we doing with scouts? I mean, not, not scouts, but agents right now, and guys holding out, and guys coming to camp late. And I understand it's all about the money, but like the fact that this is going on right now is real concerning to me. There's there's a there's a lot of red flags in baseball right now. Whether it's with with you know people that are forgetting there's people inside the uniforms, and I think that goes with agents, and I think that goes with a lot of front office people right now too. It's collusion, but it feels like it's collusion against the one guy, Scott Boris. So what's the solution for trying to break up the monopoly that he seems to have over these big-time free agents? I don't know, man. I don't know. The, the, way, the way it's structured right now, it, 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 these guys are holding out. But I think like Matt Chapman took a lot less money, and these guys that are signing late, uh, Cody Bellinger took a lot less money. And this master plan of like wait, wait, wait doesn't seem to be working to me. And when I was on in the morning for a couple of weeks, um, I, I was talking about, like, if you want to play baseball, go play baseball. Like, 
four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars isn't going to be a big deal down the road when you're all said and done and you're retired. And when you're holding out for maybe an extra year or something, like I just want guys on my team that want to play baseball. Like I understand it's it's a business, and I think we're seeing that side of the business on and off the field right now. But like I I want I, I just want to get back to where we're seeing baseball, we're watching baseball, and baseball players want to play baseball. And, and, and talking to coaches down when I was in Scottsdale, the game the game is evolving back into baseball, not just swinging as hard as you can with two strikes. Not just trying to hit home runs, but base running's being emphasized, defense is being emphasized, and just first to third, uh, reading balls in the dirt, all kinds of things that we love as fans. The little parts of the game, all of a sudden, it's evolving back into that with the rule changes, and I'm looking forward to the brand of baseball at the major league level that, that I hopefully we're going to see this year. FP, I want to go back to Snell. I totally uh, re- like. I agree with your point that it's crazy that we're even in this situation. Uh, but that said, and I don't know whether to believe the reports or not, uh, a three-year deal with opt-outs every year at somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 35 a year, I don't know, man. If I'm the Giants, I'd do it yesterday. What's what's the holdup? What, would you do this? I mean, come on, dude. You're talking to a guy that maxed out at, I think I made $900,000 was the highest I ever made. So, yeah, of course I would do this. I, I don't. I, it, it, Mark, I hate the business side of baseball. I always did. I hated having an agent. As blasphemous as it sounds, I hated the Players Association, all the collective bargaining and the meetings I used to go to. I just wanted to, like, wind me up and play. Like, push me out between the lines. Let's get dirty and let's beat somebody. Like, that's all I cared about. So all of this stuff, I, I'm probably sounding really old right now, but I have trouble wrapping my head around it. Like, go play. Go be a part of a championship. Go be a part of a parade. Get yourself a ring. Like, those are the things that motivated me. And obviously other guys are motivated by accolades and money and awards, and that's fine. Whatever gets you going. But, like, when when you're haggling over just what I see, what I feel like is just stupid stuff, like, go play, man. Go, go be a part of a winning team and a winning culture and a winning ball club. And, and I'll say this, you guys, being down in Scottsdale, it was really cool to look to my right and see – a coach that had been a giant and then look to my left and see another coach that had been a giant and then see another coach that comes over and gives me a hug that was a giant. And now you got giants coaching giants. So for whatever that's worth, that's kind of where I'm hanging my hat this year that within that clubhouse and with the parameters of those 26 guys that are going to go out and try to win a game every night, there, there's lots of great influence right now, whether it's Maddie Williams, whether it's Pat Burrell, whether it's Bob Melvin, uh, whether it's Brian Price, whoever. There's there's just a lot of baseball people around the team, and more importantly, a lot of giants around the team. And, and I think that's going to bode well for this club. Beyond that, the uh, the coaches that you got to see who made you feel like uh, giants are now coaching giants, what excited you about being down there from a player standpoint? Uh, probably the nightlife, Gibbs. It was crazy. Nice. Scottsdale, and, <laughs> Scottsdale, Scottsdale in the spring is nuts. Uh what would it be about, about the players? Uh, they were working on things I haven't seen them work on for a while. Um, I, I like the left side of the infield with Nick Ahmed and Matt Chapman. There's defense now for the Giants. Tyro at second can play defense. Um, Jung Hu Lee in center field can play defense. You, you got good defense up the middle with Patrick Bailey. So all of a sudden you have a team that's been really questionable defensively the last couple of years that's going to be able to catch the baseball. How many wins does that equate to? I have no idea, but it's just going to be a cleaner brand of baseball because we're all doing, oh, there's an any, any double play, and then he boots it. And we, we've gone through that. We've seen a lot of giants chasing the baseball down the lines when it's thrown away the last couple of years. And you're not going to see that this year. They have, they have a good defense, and, and I think that's how, – how have the Giants won World Series with pitching and defense? The bullpen's super. I, I, the starting rotation has question marks. We'll see. Uh, FP, you know, you mentioned Ahmed, the shortstop, and it's amazing how quickly the Giants have just sort of quietly transitioned to uh, Luciano went from the future to we're going to give him a shot to somehow like he's maybe not even going to make the team. What, what's going on there? Well, Luciano needs to play. He needs reps. Shortstops, you know, you're the quarterback at shortstop on defense, and that's a big, big position to play. And if you haven't had the reps and you've been injured a lot in the minor leagues and you're 22 years old and a shortstop at the major league level, you have to know where to be on every cutoff and relay. You have to know where to be on every bunt D. You have to know where to be on every first and third defense. You have to know when to take a trip to the mound and calm a pitcher down. 
there's so many different layers to play in that position, whether it's your internal clock and the speed of the runner versus the speed of the ball hits me and how long before I get rid of it. And if I go to my left and go to my, there's so many different things that just, that, that needs repetition, that needs reps. And so the hardest place to learn for me is at the big league level because you're on TV every night in front of 40,000 people. Wins and losses mean everything. So I don't know what they're going to do with them. It looks like Nick Ahmed's the shortstop. But that doesn't mean you give up on Marco Luciano. This guy's got talent, but he's just got to go play. He's just got to get reps. He's got to get like 500 at-bats somewhere and play 140 games somewhere. And then all of a sudden, as an organization, you make the decision, like, is he our shortstop of the future? Or do we stick him in left and let him lift weights and hit home runs? Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what that is right now. That's not my call. But for that position, you got to get repetitions. And just based on how little he's played in the minor leagues, that's a big ask to make him your everyday shortstop. Uh, drive safe, buddy, and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Yeah, man, look forward to seeing you guys. Thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate you guys. Have a great rest of your show. No, you too. Thank you for doing it. Appreciate it. There he is, F.P. Santangelo, live from the Bay Bridge.